Greetings, Uncle Travelling Matt here, and today is the end of what I think is our fourth day of the Scotland trip. Uh, we are still on the uh, island of North Uist, um, and we're, we're um, up at the top of the island now after having spent a day exploring the islands of North and South Uist. Okay, so when I was last talking, um, we were staying in a very windy location, um, partway down the coast of North East, uh, which is where we'd pulled up for the night. Um, but actually, we didn't stay there because it was so well windy. There was a gale last night, and it was it, it was hard down in the van. But for Tom, up in the top, it was absolutely freezing cold. So we decided not to stay there at all, but to uh, to move on to a, a slightly more sheltered spot, which was not easy to find because. You, the Uists are not really what you would call sheltered islands. Like, there's hardly any trees here. They're pretty flat. And the hills that there are are on the eastern side of the island, whereas the wind's coming from the west. So you're essentially, like, exposed to these gales coming from all the way across the Atlantic. We did find somewhere that was a little bit better. And so we stayed the night there. And because it's been a nice, relaxed day today, we woke up a bit later because we, we did struggle to get to sleep um, early. And we, we woke up and we weren't on the road until 11. And so what have we done? Well, then the first thing we did, obviously, after having uh, cooked a breakfast in the van, uh, is um, we actually went to a cafe and had a cup of tea as well. Um, there was a museum there. I wanted to see the museum, but it was shut because of uh, COVID, apparently. Um, and uh, But the cafe was nice enough. And then we carried on south. So we, we actually, where we stayed was in South Uist. Uh, and we continued right down to the end of South Uist. We bought some South Uist uh, souvenirs. They have a flag. It's another of those kind of Scandinavian looking flags. Uh, this one is green uh, with uh, white and blue. Uh, and um, actually that's quite apt because these islands for me personally feel very Scandinavian. They're like, I'm, I'm reminded so much of Iceland. Uh, they're, they're, they're bare. Uh, are rocky and barren and they have this really nordic feel to them uh, the the main difference with iceland being there's a lot more people here than iceland that's not to say there's a lot of people there aren't but there's more than iceland where there's hardly any so yeah that's that um then we we went um and down a bit south and we we found we turned off and we found for this sign for round houses um and the, these round houses, the day's been really strange. It was like throwing it down in the morning, which was one reason why we didn't really rush to go anywhere because it was windy and throwing it down. But then it was gorgeous sunshine and hot. And we, we pulled up by the cemetery and there was a, a funeral going on. But then we walked round the back of the cemetery uh, through these kind of sand dunes to these three remains of three round houses that were like about 4,000 years old. Uh, and they were really interesting, and there were child sacrifices under the roundhouses, which is, you know, pretty macabre, but, but quite cool at the same time. And then we continued on to this beach, and it was an absolutely incredible beach, this vast, empty beach with sand that is literally silver. Uh, I think it's to do with the, the, the local rock, which is called Nice, and um, so soft, this sand. So we went swimming in the Atlantic, which was bracing to say the least but it was good um really nice uh really woke us up um and then uh, after that we went back and um we continued on our way down towards Eriksay, which is the island off the bottom of south uh we we stopped at a cafe which was a lot cheaper than some of the others we've been going to uh but then the food was like really dull it was like thomas school lunches yeah it was school lunch food essentially it, it, it was like frozen fish frozen chicken burger kind of thing but it wasn't too expensive and it was quite a nice cafe and they had um free wi-fi so i used that to upload a lot of the videos and stuff like that which was good and then we continued on to ericsay now ericsay is um is the island off the bottom and we'd read about so I've been given this book, Island Earring, and somebody gave it me for Christmas. I'm not sure. It might have been my mum. might have been my brother. And um, it, it's like all these walks around different islands. And the one that we thought looked good was the Eric Say Walk. 
So we, we went we went to Eric's here. We didn't do uh, the walk because we didn't really have time, but we had a look round. There was the beach uh, where Bonnie Prince Charlie landed when he came to Scotland. And what we did, there was a pebble that we had, and this it was a painted pebble um, with the word red on it. And it was part of a project for some like tiny Welsh village where they paint pebbles and then they ask people to take them and leave them in places and photograph it. So we've left this pebble in, I think, one of the coolest locations um, for these pebbles. I'll put the link at the bottom as to these pebbles so you can see um, where they all end up, which is quite cool. And, and we, I posted a picture of this pebble in Sky when we went there and it was quite cool because the person who'd painted it said, oh, that's one of the ones I did. Oh, it's the first one of the ones I did that's actually gone anywhere. So that that was really nice. So we, we, we left that there and then kind of made our way back. But on the way back, we stopped at different places. So we stopped at Flora McDonald's birthplace, which is basically the ru ruined outlines of a croft. Um, and of course, Flora McDonald was the, uh, the lady who helped Bonnie Prince Charlie escape and the famous sky boating song is about that. He was disguised as her maid and they sailed from yeast to sky. Um, so we went there and then we went to um, a like a Neolithic burial chamber that like I think at one time would have looked a bit like the ones at Bruna Boina in Ireland um, but it, it kind of does look like a heap of stones now but a very dramatic one and the, the setting was incredible and then we also went to a stone circle nearby uh, which was pretty cool so yeah really dramatic settings while we're at the stone circle we actually found the place where the pot of gold lies because we saw a rainbow and it's the first time I've ever seen the end of the rainbow and it was at this little island in a loch nearby so if you want to know where the uh, the pot of gold with the leprechauns is that's where it is it's not in Ireland at all it's in Scotland um and then we we went up uh we're now back up at the top of the island we're gonna stay here tonight we've got a ferry tomorrow but it's not till five o'clock to be honest I'd prefer to be leaving like a bit earlier, but we missed the last ferry today. I mean, the ticket was pre-booked, so we couldn't have gone on it anyway. Um, and the next one is seven in the morning, and I certainly would not fancy that. So we've got another day here. What we're probably going to do is seek out one of those incredible beaches and chill out a bit. Uh, but it's been nice. Like, the Eusts have a really different atmosphere to Lewis and Harris. It's totally different. This is kind of, for me personally, what I was coming to Scotland to see. Something completely wild, completely desolate. It's a world away from the locks and the glens of the highlands. This is like the kind of stereotype thing. Um, and it's also really different from Lewis and Harris. And I, I'm really glad I've come here. But at the same time, there's not that much happening. And it is very windy and there's a lot of rain. And um, yeah. So yeah, that's the use. We're going to then go across to Lewis and Harris again. We've got a day... Uh, or, or so to explore them although it is a sabbath so uh, it'll mostly be like the scenic stuff rather than the cultural sites i guess uh, and then we're off on to the uh, northwest 500 uh, as long as the ferries stick to the schedules which with the weather you never know anyway that's all from me keep traveling